This is Memos, a cross between Twitter and Evernote. Imagine being able to get all your ideas, everything that you've got all over the place in Google Documents, in Evernote, in OneNote, put them all in one easy to use interface with the ability to find them in an instant. Well, that's what Memos provides, and I'm going to show you how you can use it. This is the GitHub page for Memos. It's, according to the release uh, schedule, been going since May 2022, and it's managed to garner 22,000 stars on GitHub. By its own description, Memos is a privacy-first, lightweight, note-taking service, which allows you to capture and share your great thoughts. As I've already shown you, it's a fantastic tool that I use on a daily basis to keep my stacks, to keep my notes. It's completely uh, replaced uh, Google Keep. It's completely replaced my Evernote subscription. I don't use that anymore due to this. I also used to have a bunch of things saved in Google Documents, basically just all over the place, but now I use Memos. So if I show you my version of uh, my installation of Memos, you get to see a little bit about what I'm using it for. As you can see down the side of the tags, I've got a quite a few tags on the go here. Uh, resources, you can save images uh, with your memos installation that are attached to all your notes. You have a timeline, which I clearly don't use. <laughs> um, and then obviously you've got the, the main note-taking area, which as you can see, I use pretty heavily. Um, but in terms of stacks, I also use it to save a lot of the stacks and compose files. Uh, that I use on a daily basis um, as well, which is really, really cool. So if we head over to the uh, GitHub page here for uh, memos, you'll see some of the key points here. It's open source and it's free forever. You can get it working in a few minutes. It has pure text with added markdown support. And it even uses a RESTful API for third party services. It's got a lot of contributors. So thank you to every one of you who contribute to this project to make it what it is. And as you can see, like I mentioned earlier on, it's absolutely exploding uh, with the self-hosted community. So without further ado, let's install Memos. One of the first things that I'm going to do, because I host all my self-hosted projects on Windows on Docker, is I'm going to bind mount my uh, memos directory, the volume that uh, persists all our information that saves all those notes and, and resources. Uh, and I'm going to put that into my Docker stuff directory uh, with a, oops, sorry, backslash, with a folder memos and data. We don't ever change uh, what's on the right hand side of the colon, uh, only on the left. And port 5230 is free on my machine, so I will keep it. If you're running something on 5230, you can actually change the port number on the left here. Just don't change the one on the right. Something else that I'm going to uh, add to the compose file, uh, which I add to all my compose files, are their own networks. So you can just, this will all be in the description below. It's got a copy and paste job for you. Uh, and I also like to put deploy resource limitations in place for all my containers because on Windows in the past, I have come across things like network, uh, IP conflicts, things like that. Don't need to worry about it if everything is in its own little network. Not seen any impact negatively by doing this. If anything, it'll probably improve security uh, because every single application is not only nestled in its own container, but its own network. And the other thing, uh, like I say, is deploy resource limitations have come across in the past one or two containers that had memory leaks, things like that. This just firmly locks down what it is able to use and what it isn't. Um, I've got a 16 core processor. This just lets it use four of those cores and only a gig around at maximum. And, and I highly doubt it will even go close uh, to a gig, but it's there regardless. Uh, again, all this is a copy and paste job. It'll be in the description for you below. So when we're happy and you've uh, edited your directory for where you're saving your memos data, we're going to copy this and we're going to head over to our 
our dockage installation. If um, you don't have dockage, um, basically it's a portainer alternative. Um, great companion for Docker, by the way. I've got a link in the description for a video for you to watch. Um, really helps saving your Compose files, and it saves them locally, which means if you ever have to reinstall Dockage from scratch, um, you don't lose access to your Compose files, which at the moment you do with uh, Portina. So, yeah, really helpful stuff. So what we're going to do, uh, if you want to check that out, look at that video. But we're going to hit straight Compose here. I'm going to select all this and replace it with our memos. So when we've pasted that in there, we're just going to give the stack a name. And that looks pretty good. It's got its network set up here. Everything's okay. Going to be running on 5230. And then we're just going to hit deploy. One of the cool things about Dockage is it tells you in real time exactly what is happening. Yes, so this is a nice prompt for you to see. Docker on Windows, we're using Hypervisor. It is asking if we want to share this directory with this project in the Hypervisor. Yes, we do. And we should be able to run this now straight from here. So we're now at the memos create account screen. And as you can see at the bottom here, you are registering as the site host. So we're going to give it a fancy name and a fancy password. And we're in this. It was as simple as this. Hardly any configuration required whatsoever. Um, should you want to configure it anymore, you certainly can. There's so many different settings that you have in here, including the default memo visibility, which by default is private, which just means if anyone on your network goes to your computer's IP address and the port number, or if you set up a, a, an internal or external domain for this, no one is going to be able to see your notes apart from you, because by default it is private. You can create members, you've got all sorts of things in here you can change, including bots storage we're going to leave this as is because we've already configured a persistent uh, directory for this to run through so yeah really really cool stuff you got your entire profile here there's nothing in your profile at the moment obviously because you haven't you haven't created anything and explore say i tell you this will be a really cool to tool for uh, a community or a group of developers that want to leave each other notes. And I'll tell you a little hidden trick with this system, more like a tip than a trick, um, is it's a fantastic paste bin. So, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically where you can just leave something pasted for another friend or, or whatever to copy from. If you both set up accounts on here and 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 do that, um, honestly, God, that is perfect as a paste bin. Um, and that's memos in a, in a nutshell. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I wanted to make it nice and quick, something easy to deploy. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.